This is lesson 3 of Maharij and Sufat series. In lesson 2, we started tackling the second area of articulation, which is the throat. Al-Halq. The throat has three articulation points. The farthest point from which come Hamza and Ha. These two were discussed last lesson. Then we have the middle point and the nearest point. Today's main focus is the middle point of articulation. From this area, we pronounce two letters. They are Ha and Ain. So, let's get started. As we said, Ha and Ain come from the middle part of the throat, but to be more specific, from an organ called the epiglottis, which is that small flat part at the back of the tongue, that closes when you swallow to prevent food from entering the tube that goes into your lungs. So controlling that area is the most important thing to learn to produce Ha and Ain successfully. We'll start with the sound of Ain. Ain is produced when the epiglottis is pushed all the way back to the wall of the throat while leaving a small opening at which the sound is generated. Pay attention, the sound is not generated by pushing air out, but by vibrating your vocal cords. Ah! Ah! The sound of Ain is a semi-continuous sound, which means that it can be extended or made longer. And while that is not the point when reciting the Quran, it is an indication that you're pronouncing the Ain correctly. Ta ta du. Ta ta du. Wa budu. Wa budu. Iya ka na budu wa iya ka nastain. Moving on to the ha which is the other sound that is generated from the same articulation point, using the same organ, the epiglottis. This time your epiglottis will not go far or push against the wall of your throat like we did with Ain, so it will not go as far as Ain. Another difference is that with Ha, you'll be pushing air out, the friction of that air passing through the small opening generates the ha sound. Ah, 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 darat, ah, darat, mahfuz, mahfuz. So for the ain. You push the epiglottis almost against the wall of your throat to force the sound from that area. While the ha, you push the epiglottis back, not as much, and you will push air out to cause the friction to happen and generate the sound. So these are the two sounds generated from the middle part of the throat, using the epiglottis. And as a matter of fact, how much you can control your epiglottis will determine how well you can produce these two sounds. Here are two tricks you can try to help yourself have more control over your epiglottis. The first trick is to start by applying a gargling position, because when your neck is in this position, it is easier to practice your Ain and control your epiglottis. After that, you start with an Ah sound, a full mouth alif and you keep pushing up that ah sound until you feel it is not a vowel anymore and you start hearing the proper ain. Ah. The other trick to try to practice both ain and ha is by lying on your back and practicing both of these sounds. This position helps a lot with controlling your epiglottis more easily when you're standing upright. And as a rule of thumb, if you don't know either of these two sounds, it is usually easier to start at the ha 
and then push back to achieve the ayn sound because the ha for most people is easier as a starting point since it is lighter to pronounce than ayn all right now that we know the basics of how these sounds are performed let us discuss the most common mistakes related to these two sounds as for the ayn the first mistake is pushing your epiglottis too far back, turning the ayn into a hard, cut letter with no continuation whatsoever. The result is that the ayn, especially when used in the middle of the sentence, would essentially split the word into two, and that is not a good technique, of course. Like, na budu, na budu. Instead, the sound of ayn should be an easy one on the ear, and most importantly, to know if you're making the right sound, try to extend it a bit. Ah. If you can, then you are on the right track. If you are stopping and can't extend, that means your ayn is too hard and probably splitting words. The second mistake is leaving too big an opening between the wall of your throat and the epiglottis, producing what we call in Tajweed a floating ayn, which sounds like this na budu, na budu. So this ayn is closer to an alif rather than an actual ayn, and this should also be avoided. These two mistakes are mostly made by beginners, but with more exercise, you can get there, insha'Allah. Finally, Adding qalqala to ayn with sukun, and it sounds like this. Na'abudu, na'abudu, innahu ya'alamu al-jahr. The ayn is not a qalqala letter. If it has sukun, then it is fully sakin, a pure consonant. Next, the first common mistake of ha is pronouncing it as ha. This happens when you don't push your epiglottis at all, which could probably happen if you're trying the ha sound for the first time, or when you don't have control over your epiglottis yet. Ahwa, ahwa. So it is important to hear the difference and more important not to mix them up because this is a mistake that can potentially change the meaning of the word. The other mistake is assimilating the ha and ayn sound when they follow one another. This mistake can easily happen because both of these sounds come from the exact same spot. A mistake sounds like this. So when they follow one another, make sure you produce the first one clearly before moving to the next one. Finally, while ha and ayn might be among the most difficult sounds in Arabic, the more you practice and the more you read the Quran, the easier they get, insha'Allah. Thanks for watching. If you want to start reading and understanding the Quran in Arabic, then you should start your journey right here. And don't forget to check out my latest book, which goes perfectly with this free course. I'll leave the links for all of them in the description, so check them out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.